Hmm, g'day, Tragic here, and welcome back to Lord of the Rings. We are going to be playing with this deck here. It's called Transient Spirits. And I won't really go into all the deck stuff, but basically the key card is Erastor. This is the card that we are going to be mulliganing for. Everything else with the deck is pretty self-explanatory. So let's load it up on Dragon Cards. Now, this is part of the progression series, so that means it's a restricted deck. And a restricted deck just means that it's only available for... The cards available are only the ones up to the current cycle that the, the quest was released in. So if I just go to... If I just go to here and I click... Uh, edit and I go to sets you can see that it's just the core all of Mirkwood all of Khazadum and of course the saga over the hill is part of that set so the way the original release schedule was is that they'd release a saga set they'd release a cycle and then they'd release a pod and that forms the next entire cycle so any if you're playing a restricted card pool so if you're playing if your deck is restricted you're only allowed to use any cards that were released before your quest or any cards that were released inside the current cycle that you were in restricted plus means that you can only use cards released to the actual moment like the very pack that you are playing and epic just means you can play with anything anyway so in our progression series i'm up to watch it in the water so let's load this sucker up. And I'll just press F11 to get that full screen. As I said, the goal of this deck is to be able to get Aristor in our opening hand and we have him in our opening hand. We've also got some, what's it called, threat reduction and we've got a bunch of chump blockers. And that's basically why this deck is called Transient Spirits because there's a lot of monsters in this quest and we're just going to feed those monsters our allies. They just come and go. We don't care about them. Questing's not an issue in this deck and we are using two very powerful characters here. We've got Glorfindel, who is probably the most powerful out of the core, you know, early days of the game. Very, very strong hero, simply for he's got such low threat. You just can't beat the five threat when you're doing solo decks. It's just so powerful. So much so that a lot of people don't like using him. And I, to be honest, I don't really like using him in two-handed or more. But for a solo deck, it just can give you so much room to maneuver having that five threat. And also Frodo, of course, is great for this quest, as you'll see later, because he can absorb damage as threat. And we have the Prince, of course, and I actually think he's very underrated. A little expensive on the threat rise, but his ability to untap as characters leave play, it's only limited to once around, but it's still extremely strong. And, you know, it means that he can quest and attack or block and attack. There's a lot of things you can do with him. And particularly in this particular deck, because this deck is designed for our allies to die. So awesome. Okay, but we're pretty happy with this. So we're just going to draw our next card. And let's get started. To the West Door, the Watcher in the Water. Elrond has asked you to scout the Mines of Moria on your return to Lorien, hoping to discover if it is the source of increased orc activity along the Misty Mountains. We don't have to worry about the setup text because that's all done by the app here, but basically the doors are Durin and the Watcher in the Water is set out of play. Your approach is blocked by a dark lake that slumbers beneath the face of the cliffs. You must search for a way around the water. When revealed, reveal cards from the encounter deck and add them to the staging area until there is at least X threat in the staging area. X is twice the number of players in the game. There's one player in this game, so we just need two threat. So let's draw. Okay, two threat is a thrashing tentacle. And now we're ready to start. So let's have a quick look at the thrashing tentacle. This is quite interesting. All the different tentacles have variations of this ability. And what is interesting is that it's a bit confusing, especially if you play other card games. Because this card game and all the LCGs, they use bold as a way of highlighting keywords they don't use bold as a way of highlighting important information on the card, which is how 
people use bold in real life. So it can be a little confusing. Like if you scan this card just quickly, you might think it triggers off tentacles and a tentacle card, you know, but it doesn't. It triggers off any card that has a shadow effect and only tentacle enemies, not just tentacle cards. So you've got to read these quite carefully. They all do all the same. So once you know what you're looking for, it's not a problem. But basically this tentacle and all the other tentacles and much of the other stuff in this set, they trigger off shadow effects, any card with a shadow effect, and they trigger off tentacle enemies, not just tentacle cards. So we've got to keep that in mind. Anyway, so if we look at this monster, this particular monster means that when we attack him, we have to discard the top card of the encounter deck. And if it is a tentacle enemy or has a shadow effect, then the damage we deal to it as an attack is actually redirected to another character we control. It doesn't have to be the attacking character. It's like any character on our board. Let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna move the prints here. Let's take them off. And I'm just gonna make the cards a little bigger, just so a bit easier to see for you guys. And we're going to place out a Chumper. I am not going to cast the Scout. I'd like to cast the Scout, but since we actually have Aerostore in hand already, I'd like to get him out as soon as possible. Now, there's a lot of monsters in here, so I'm expecting a monster to come out, which means we need two blockers. So I'm actually only going to quest with the Prince. And then we've got Frodo to block, and we've got the horse breaker to block. Okay, so we're questing for two, yablamo. Okay, when revealed, the first three players must discard three resources of each hero he controls. So I wish I'd cast that scout now. This is actually quite an interesting card. There's a number of these in the encounter deck and you'll see that the, the top of the card, the when revealed card is discard three resources off everyone. And the shadow effect is discard two resources off everyone. So it's when you've got two heroes with the same resource pool, like in we have Glorfindel and Frodo, it's always a good idea to not to share around the costs. We want to keep one hero with as many resources as possible and the other one with as little resources as possible. Because if Frodo has five resources and this guy has zero and we get hit for three resources, we'll end up with two resources for the next round. If he has two resources and he has three resources, then we end up with no resources. Like often you want to try and balance who you're taking your resources from. But in this particular case, we want to stack resources on one of these characters. Anyway. Whatever. The point is that happened. And because there's two in the staging area and we're questing for two, you can see the quest power here and the progress here and the staging here. But anyway, the point is there's no threat game. So this guy attacks us. We give it a shadow card. And I'm going to defend with Frodo. Let's flip it over. It has a shadow effect, but it just says if this attack is undefended, which it is defended. So we're just going to get rid of that. And now we attack back. We only need three to kill it. So we'll just attack with Glorfindel and we'll draw another card. And here we go. So this is a tentacle card. So it has tentacle as the type. But remember, if you read the card carefully, it only triggers off tentacle enemy. And this is not an enemy. So nothing happens. This effect doesn't trigger, so the wounds are actually placed, and he is killed. Okay, let's refresh. Got more threat reduction, and I'm going to go one, two, and place out another quester. Now, this time we've got nothing in the staging area, so we can be a bit more free with our questing. And I think I'm going to quest for three, because I want to quest slowly. There's only two stages here, and once we get to the next stage, out comes this guy. So we want our engine to be fully developed before we get to stage two. So out comes the next card. It's another two point enemy, so that means we get one progress token. This guy is now going to attack us. This one is also a three health, no damage, and that reminds me, uh, I, I defended with Frodo, right? So he actually would have gotten one wound and one threat would have gone up. Uh, no threat would have gone up, actually. Yeah. 
because this guy attacked for three and he defended at two. Anyway, so uh, because we don't need to attack back with the prince, I'm going to defend with Frodo again. Bamo, no shadow effect. That's another wound, but instead of him dying, we're just going to add one threat. Now we're going to attack with Glorfindel, but we're also going to attack with the Westworld Traveller. You can attack even if they have zero attack power. Okay, so we're attacking with both these people. And this one says that we discard a card, and if it's a shadow effect or a tentacle enemy, this thing gets attached. So let's just see what happens, and if it does, I'll explain it. This is a tentacle enemy. Okay, so what it says is, when Grasping Tentacle is attacked, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If that card has a shadow effect or is a tentacle enemy, attach this card to an attacking character. This is why we attack with two characters. Attached character gets zero attack and zero defense, which is fine. So we're just going to place that on uh, Traveler. Remember, it does say attached to attacking character. It does not have to be a hero. And which basically means this doesn't affect us. It has no effect on whether this guy here can block or attack or quest. So awesome. That's that. Yablamo. Okay. So we've got quite a lot. We have a very unlucky opening hand here with quite a lot of leadership cards. Now, Aristor is four. So it takes quite a while to save up for him. I want to get him out as quickly as possible. So the question is, do I delay a turn? I don't think I do. We're in a pretty good position right now. I think we're going to do the same thing we did last turn. We're going to hopefully not draw that terrible when revealed. And we're going to quest for three. And boom, out comes the Stagnant Creek. Discard the top card of the encounter deck. Let's do that. Yablamo. It is a tentacle enemy. If the discarded card is a tentacle enemy, add that card to the staging area and raise the player's threat by five. That is bad. One, two, three, four, five. And we're negative two because we were only questing for three. So that is one, two. That was raising a seven threat gain there, not good. Okay, so we're traveling to that location and then this guy's coming down to attack us. Now, this guy's a little different. This guy takes four to kill because he has one defense and he has a very nasty ability. When the striking tentacle attacks, discard the top card of the encounter deck. If that card has a shadow effect or is a tentacle enemy, this attack is considered undefended. So we're going to block with the traveler. Boom. It does have a shadow effect. It gets plus one. And that means... This is now attacking for five. And now, Yabamo! What luck. So this is not a tentacle enemy. It does not have a shadow effect. That is awesome. Goodbye. That means this is not undefended. It kills this guy, Yablamo, which untaps the prince. And then the prince and Glorfindel attack for six, which kills this guy. And we are ready for the next turn. I'm going to go one, two, place out another chump. And this time I'm going to quest with Frodo and with the Prince and with the Horsebreaker. Requesting for five. And Yablamo, what you got for us? Okay, so this is a Perilous Swamp. Very, I love this... Uh, Card. I think this is a great card. It's got beautiful art. It's a nice chunky four threat and it's got a cool ability where no more than one progress token can be placed on Perilous Swamp each round. So like when you travel there, you're like, you know, up to your waist in the swamp, you're like dragging your feet, trying to get through it. Great thematic card. Anyway, we're traveling for five, four in the staging area. So we get one token placed. Nothing else happens. Yablamo, let's draw again. Okay, so we now have four, one, two, three, four, that can put out Aerostore. So we have our engine working. We also have stand and fight ready to go. And because there's nothing, there's no other cards we can play, 
I'm just going to go one, two, three, and play the greeting and drop my threat by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now there's four in the staging area here. So let's go two, four, six, seven, and I'm also going to play the greeting, which gives us eight. And we also drop our threat by three. One, two, three. What you got for us? Your bam. Okay, so he has a when revealed effect that allows us to discard an attachment, but we don't have any, so it doesn't matter. And that gives us two progress tokens, which is perfect because two progress tokens clears this location. We can then move the four location out. This guy can attack. He gets a shadow card. We defend with the horse breaker. Let's flip. No shadow effect. He's attacking for three. He's defending at zero. He dies, which untaps the prince. And then we go attack for six. And if you look, he only needs five to kill. If you're ever looking for a really easy way to work out how much damage to put on something, all you need to do is add the two values. So if you add the defense, which is three, and the health, which is two, that's five. That's You only need five to kill him. We're attacking for six, so he is dead. Hey, bam. Okay. Jablom. Okay, so we've drawn a second Eristor, which we don't need, and Eristor's ability is choose and discard one card from your hand to draw a card. So we're just going to discard Eristor and draw another one. And there you go. Now we have Hero of Marth. So we've basically got our engine. We are ready to win the game. So we've got Hemersmarth. We've got stand and fight. All we need to do now is complete. So now we want to quest as quickly as possible. So quest, 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 quest. Uh, this is discarded. Oh, so wait, I didn't actually pay for my, I didn't actually do any of my things, did I? So let's pay one from here and put out a Shadowborn Scout as well. And we currently do not have any spirit to do. Okay, so let's draw six in the staging area. There's only one in the staging area. We're questing for seven. So that is one, two. Oh, we can't do two. We can only put one on because we're in the swamp. You blamo. Okay, here's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one off Frodo place out the Mathan. This allows us to draw three cards when we explore this location. I do have four resources here, so I could do a standard fight, but I want to keep standard fight for when Hemimarth comes out, which uh, I actually should do right now, shouldn't I? Let's get Eristor. He's just going to discard this guy and draw another card. We get uh, Westworld Traveler. That's perfect. So we go one off Frodo, one off Glorfindel, we place out the Traveler, and we'll get one off Glorfindel, we'll put Heron's Marth on the table and discard Stand and Fight. The so Stand and Fight basically says, choose an ally with a printed cost of X in any player's discard pile, put that ally into play under your control. And it works on any ally because we're just bringing them back to life. And that's how we get a lore character out. Let's quest. Bam. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're questing for nine. What's coming? Bam. Okay, so this is, there's six in this, there's three in the staging area, we're questing for nine. So that's six points. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, when this is discarded, we get to draw three cards. Beautiful. And I'm going to travel to this one here because we don't want this in staging as it will give everyone plus one attack after they engage. So we're just going to move that in there. And it's higher threat anyway, so there's no reason. And also, we now got Heron Martha in action, so we'll tap him to peek at the top. 
and we can keep an eye on what's going coming next. We have another striking tentacle. Zoom. We have another error store. So I'm just going to go one, two, place out Stargazer, and then I'm going to tap her. I prefer to tap at the end of the round usually, like after questing phase, but uh, I mean after combat phase, but uh, I'm going to do it now because we'll get to peek, rearrange the cards, and then draw. And, ooh, wow, there's two cards I really want here. This guy's going to give us two. This guy's going to give us three. I think I'll go like that. Okay, so keep order. And then I'm just going to go discard draw with error store. Pay one more spirit. And place out Valar of Light. This allows Glorfindel to quest without tapping, which of course negates his threat raising issue. Again, again, we're trying to go fast now. So let's quest with him. That's, oop, yeah, sorry, press the right button. That's quest for two. Quest for three, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And out comes the next card. Striking Tentacle. Okay, so we're plus nine here. So that is because we're questing for 12 and there is, what, three in the staging area? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, so that is passed. That's passed, and this is passed. The seething lake. The others swung around and saw the waters of the lake seething, as if a host of snakes were swimming up from the southern end. Quote from Fellowship of the Wings. The doors of Durin are blocked by an ancient spell. You must figure out a way into the mines before the seething bog and its watcher consumes you all. <laughs> When revealed, add the Watcher to the staging area. Doors of Durin become the active location. Moving any previous active location to the staging area, well, there is no active location, so who cares, and shuffle or tentacle cards in the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. So that's nice. So this thing goes up here. The Watcher goes up here. And we just need to, what is it, tent? We just need to put in the tentacle. Is it any tentacle card or tentacle card? So, for example, this is not a tentacle enemy, but it is a tentacle card. So, we're just going to press the H button to. Oop, that's still in the. That was still doing the search. So, we're just going to press the H button to send these into the deck. Bam. So, they're all shuffled in. Everything's working. I'll have a quick look at what we've got now. For starters, we have the Watcher. He is pretty nasty. He regenerates two while there's another tentacle enemy in play. And he'll sort of snipe three damage to any character while he's in the staging area. So what this means is his regeneration is not linked to the staging area. He has four threat. So we may as well pull him out of the staging area if we can we can optionally engage this guy because regardless of what happens, he is going to snipe a character every turn. In addition though, we do currently have no damage on our hero who's a five and another hero who's a four. So we can actually absorb two hits from his sniping of the three damage without you know losing any characters. But I don't think it's really gonna be an issue. I'm going to leave him in the staging area for now. And we're going to have this guy come down. Give him a shadow card. We're going to block with the scout and reveal. No shadow effect. Now we reveal a card. It is a tentacle card. And this thing says if it isn't a tentacle card, the attack is considered undefended. And this is why Frodo is in this deck. Because we're just going to eat that four damage as threat. Uh, you know what? Why don't we just eat it on a... We'll just eat it here. Why not? One, two, three, four. We'll just damage Glorfindel. Now, the annoying thing is, because we didn't actually kill a character... Oh, we did kill a character. No, we didn't kill a character because this was undefended, so he actually isn't killed, right? 
the damage doesn't hit him, which means that Prince does not untap, which means we can only attack back for three. I have got this guy to attack back for four, but I'm not going to use him. I have got another use for him. So we're attacking for three, and that puts down two wounds. Oops, two wounds on this guy. Then I'm going to tap Hensmarth and peek. Okay, and we have a B for black, which is annoying because there's definitely... I don't have any Bs, I think, in my deck. Okay, let's reload. Yablam. Right. Oh, wait, and this guy was in top of the staging area, so he is going to kill this guy, and that's at the end of the combat phase. Yeah, so that wouldn't have helped us with the untapping. So what am I going to do here? For starters, let's just tap her and see the top five. Any Bs? No, we'll just keep order. Right, so what I really need here is quest power. So I think I'm just going to do a lot of questing. So quest, 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 quest. And we need, uh, that gives us eight questing power. We might draw another enemy. We have this enemy here to deal with. So we need two chumpers. So we've got, I need to put out one more card. So I'm going to go one, two, and put out this guy. Okay, so next card is the when revealed. So that's plus one, but we don't get to put anything down. When revealed says that we destroy this thing, which I, I should have known about. I don't know why I put that out. <laughs> And this guy now attacks us. Nothing gets placed because you have to do this sort of fancy thing I'll talk about later. He gets a shadow card. Oh, that should be discarded. And he gets a shadow card. Okay. So I'm going to block with you. He's killed. And... He untaps, could have quested with him, doesn't matter though. And I'm also going to block with the prince. There is no shadow effect, but we draw another card. It is not a tentacle card, so the damage is not redirected. That means he gets all the damage, so that is two wounds because he's attacking for four. And this guy here, we can, uh, this guy is attacking for three. That puts two wounds on him, so he is killed. Okay, let's load up again. Right, so I'm going to go one, two, three. Oh, I forgot to peek at the deck using Heramath before I reset. Mountain Wag. Westward Traveler. Okay, so I'm going to go one, two, three. Place out you and you. I'm also going to discard the West Road Traveler and then draw the WAG because this says, oh, progress tokens that are placed on doors are placed on the current quest card instead. Oh, I thought, you know, I've been playing for ages that you can't put any quest points anywhere while the door is up. Like it stops there. So uh, we were plus one. So we actually have a token here. That's pretty cool. Anyway, as an action, each player may discard any number of cards from his hand, then discard the top card of the encounter deck. If the first letter of the encounter's card title matches that of one of the discarded player's cards, add Doors of Durin to your victory display. Limit once per round. So we know through tapping of, you know, Hensmarth, that this guy was next. He starts with an M. Oh, that starts with an M. What am I doing? What up? I didn't, I read that completely wrong. What am I doing? Anyway, the point is you discard a card and then draw a card. And if they have the same for matching first letter, then you can actually just play. I put out these two cards from him and let's go. So I'm going to go quest, 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 quest. I'm going to pay one resource to put beefer out and quest because basically spend one resource to put beef into play from your hand, exhausted and committed to the quest. 
If you quest successfully this phase and Bilfer is still in play, return him to your hand. Oh, and also I forgot to kill Stargazer. Headshot. Got to remember to kill this guy. For this guy to kill someone at every turn. Okay. So, let's draw. We know it's going to be the Warg. That's four points. And remember, we can actually place it on the quest card. So, one, two, three, four. And you'll note that that's turned green because we've passed it. But if you look, it says, if players have at least three victory points and defeat the stage they've won. So, we need to def get three victory points. So, that is three victory points from here. And that is three victory points from here. Okay, so this guy is going to come down and attack us, and we're going to get shadow cards for both these guys. Now I'm going to tap Hensmarth and just see what's next while I remember. It's a thrashing tentacle. I wish I had more of my card draw because we're a bit short on cards to run this. Okay, so I'm going to block this guy. No shadow effect. He dies. He untaps. I'm going to block with this guy. No shadow effect. Which means this guy goes up into the air again. And boom. And then the Watcher. We're going to use the Watcher to kill this guy. Uh, no, kill this guy. Because this guy's got one quest power, this guy's got two. Okay, and then we attack back for six, which kills this bloke. Bam. We are actually quite doing really badly with this uh, final push. We're still going to have... Oh, and... This guy needs to kill someone. Did I kill? Oh, no, I killed him with that guy. Yeah, I killed this bloke with him. So we're still going to have two people we have to sacrifice. So let's quest with you. We'll quest with you. We'll quest with you and you. And we'll place... Her, uh, her effect of plus one onto Bofa. Okay, requesting for eight. Out comes another one. We are negative one. That's one more threat. Both these guys attack us. I'm just going to tap you, see what's next. A WAG and a West Road Traveler. So we're fine. Basically, remember there is an action phase after these things are revealed. So we tapped him. We saw the Wag's lair is next. I'm going to discard West Road Traveler. We then discard the top card of the encounter deck, which is also Wag's lair. So that's both got the same name. Bam, bam. And that means this thing here is sent to the victory display. And now that it's part of the victory display, we actually have three victory points. This is already cleared. So the way I used to play was a bit harder because I'd have to do one more questing round to get those five points. So yeah, it's a little bit easier that way, but that is finished. The quest is done. Now this deck didn't perform nearly as well as it normally does. Basically, we usually get more of these standard fights. If I just go back to the actual deck, we have three standard fights. So they usually, you know, just get right in there, be able to pull. Because, that, you know, in those final questing things, you can actually pull questers from the graveyard. Also, we have Valiant Sacrifice, which allows you to draw cards when people die. We also have three of these Mathens. We only saw one, you know. So there was a ton of card draw that didn't happen. So normally... Basically, the deck worked really, really well, except for the fact that it normally has cards up with a wazoo, so it's very easy to open the doors. But that's that. That is Watching the Water, and it is done. I'll see you guys next time.